pray the Lord. If God will bless me. And uh, it's because Jesus bore our curse. Look what happened here. In uh, Deuteronomy what the Lord said. <coughs> says, if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, I'll, I'll stop right there and just let you know you're that man. We've all committed sin worthy of death. The Bible says that uh, to murder is a sin worthy of death. In the New Testament, Jesus reveals to us what the Ten Commandments always said. Jesus said that hate within your heart is the same as being a murderer. Uh, adultery is a sin worthy of death. You might say, I've never committed adultery. Jesus said, if you've ever looked at the opposite sin, and lust and in your heart, you've committed adultery in your heart. Uh, idol worship was uh, a sin worthy of death. You might say, well, I've never worshipped an idol. Paul said that covetousness is idol worship. We've all done sins worthy of death. Okay? I'm not trying to beat you down. I'm trying to bless you here. Just bear with me a second. If a man has committed a sin worthy of death, we're all guilty. Adam sold us out. We're in a fallen world and a fallen priest. And he, and he be to be put to death, thou shalt hang him on a tree. This is how you killed a man who committed a sin worthy of death. And then it says, His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God, that thy land be not defiled which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Now when a man committed a sin worthy of death, when they killed him, they hung him up on a tree for everybody to see, but they didn't hang him there all night. They took him down. And I'm going to go to Galatians now. Chapter 3, verse 13. I'm going to show you what Paul says about Christ. Christ has redeemed us. Let me give you a quick definition on that word redeemed. If I pawn my watch, say for $30 at the pawn shop, and they give me a little slip, and that slip is a redeemed slip. If I come back within three weeks and give them like three or four dollars interest, then I can redeem, buy back my watch. Adam sold us out. Paul says I'm carnal, sold into sin, but Jesus Christ came and he bought us out of sin. He bought us back to the Father. What he buys with? With his own blood. And what was the, what cursed us? Them Ten Commandments is just 10 of the 613 that God gave to Moses. 613 commandments is how we live to be righteous before God. We've all broke them commandments. And James says if you just break one, then you've broken the whole thing. But if you break them commandments, then the law, which is holy, just and good, we talk about how holy the Ten Commandments are and how good they are if we just keep the Ten Commandments. But the problem is we can't keep them. They put a curse upon us. They show us how sinful that we really are. So Christ bought us back from the curse that the Ten Commandments has put up on us from us being in sin. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Look what it says here. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Christ went to the cross and he hung upon a tree. Why? To bear our curse. The Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not commit adultery like I just said. We've all done it. Thou shalt not covet. We've all done it. Thou shalt not lie. We've all
Look, to redeem us by the fact that we're under law that we might receive the adoptions of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, whereby you cry, Abba, Father. Because Christ went to the cross, you who are of your father, the devil, if you receive salvation, you now can call God your Father. And the Spirit within you cries out and calls Him that. Christ took your curse. And by that, I want you to think for a minute what that really says. He was made a curse for us. Why? That we might be blessed. How blessed are you? How cursed was he? That's the answer. How much of a curse did he bear? Depends on how blessed we are. He's the Almighty God, and he left heaven's glory. He left his form. He left the angels. He left the praise. He left it all to be born in the stable a poor man. And then he lived a life as a poor man, and then his own creation rejected him. And then they spit upon him, they ripped his beard out, they blindfold him and hit him in the face as they prophesied who hit you when he knew before the foundation of the world who it was that was going to hit him. He bore that big of a curse that he may give us that big of a blessing. And that's what we're talking about is the curse. Whenever Adam sinned, what he done was he sold us to Satan. The first thing that God says to Adam when he sins in the garden, he says, In the sweat of thy face, thou shalt eat thy bread. You know God never intended for man to sweat? You know that the Bible talks about whenever the Lord comes back to renew the earth, that uh, the sun shall not beat upon our backs no more that causes the overheat and the sweat? Do you know it says that? Sweat never was of God. Whenever Jesus comes back in the window of kingdom, he says he commands all the priests to wear garments that do not cause sweat in the house of the Lord. Sweat is a curse put up on man. Adam lived in the garden and he ate in the pool of the day. But sweat is a curse that came because of sin. And look what Jesus does. He comes and bears that curse for us. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. Christ bore that curse that we never had to worry about the sun burning our skin again, causing us to overheat. This is this heat wave. I think in Pike County we had, what, eight die? Or maybe it was the tri-state area. But it was just like eight people has died in just this last couple of weeks because of the heat. It's just too much that most of us had to have air conditioning or room from it. Because it's more than we can handle. But Christ, He went and He took and He sweat for us. And, the, and doctors will tell you if you're under enough pressure that you can actually sweat blood. Well, Christ sweat blood and it's His blood that cleanses us from all sin. For the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin, 1 John 1, 7. And from all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9. And sweat is a part of a curse. It's a part of sin. So He sweat blood to redeem us from that curse. The second curse is that was on Christ was he was marred more than any man. That's what it says in Isaiah 52. His visage was marred more than any man. His own mother wouldn't have been able to recognize him had she not watched him get beat. He, he, you couldn't notice his appearance. Why was he beat beyond recognition? Because sin had put a curse on him. To the point of here was Adam in the garden. And God was walking with him. Hello, my son. How you doing? And he just talking and communing with him. And then all of a sudden, Adam eats of a tree. And God says, where art thou, Adam? He didn't know where Adam was. Really? God didn't know where Adam was? That sounds like a rhetorical question. Of course God knew where Adam was. Why did God say that then? Because righteous Adam was gone. That guy was gone. He was no longer recognized as righteous and holy anymore. So Christ came and was beat beyond recognition where he was unrecognizable that we may be recognized of God again. Let me show you this in 2 Timothy 2.19. I want you to know something. So many people <clears throat> think that they're going to go to heaven because of how good they are. Jesus said, many shall come and say, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not built great buildings in thy name? Have we not so many great works in thy name? You know what they're going to say? Who are you? Who are you? I don't know you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You're not going to heaven by being a good person. You're going to heaven because he was made your curse that you can be his blessing. Praise the Lord. He was made your body at the cross for he who knew no sin was made sin that you might be made his body, the righteousness of God in him for you are the body of Christ. Right now. He was made a curse that you could be 
made a blessing. And here's the thing. Adam, God had to say, who are you? But I want you to know something. If you're saved, you never had to worry about God saying, who are thou? Or where are thou? Look what it says. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands assured, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I want you to know, you never had to hear the words that Adam heard. Or art thou? Or who are you? Or depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Because Christ bore your curse, you now bear His blessing. Because Christ bore your curse, you never had to hear them words. Or are you? He says, the Lord says, I know. Well, that's some great news. That's really good. So many people go to bed at night and they can't sleep because so many preachers preach, beat them up with the Bible. You commit one sin, you're going to hell. You can live for Jesus for 50 years and you commit one sin, you're going to hell. How can anybody have any freedom living that kind of Christian life? Because we're all sold out to sin. We all sin daily. Who in here can say they ain't sin all day yesterday? The Bible says the dog foolishness is sin. Who in here can say they never committed to sin yesterday? Did you look at anything that was attractive to your eyes? It don't matter if it's the neighbor's yard or the opposite sex or a nice house or a nice car. If you come to anything, it was sin. If you had a foolish thought, it was sin. Are we so foolish that we think we have to live perfect to add to the righteousness of the blood of Christ? That's what Paul says to the Galatians. He says, are you so foolish? Who cast a spell upon you that you believe this? How did you receive the Holy Ghost? Was it because of how good you was? Or because you heard how good he was? Praise the Lord. Hey, I'm trying to tell you how good he is. He bore every sin you ever ever done. And every sin everybody else ever done. And all that Adam so does out of you, he bore it all. And he hung up on that tree being made an open shame to set you free. To make you his body. You are so blessed. It's more than I got food in my belly and clothes on my back. I got a home in heaven. I got a body in heaven. I got a crown in heaven. I got a God who loves me and who calls himself my husband. Hallelujah. I got something to get excited about. I got something to lift my hands and praise God about because I know what I know that he is mine and I am his and that I can't be a curse because Christ was cursed for me and that I have to be a blessing because now I am the body of Christ. Boy, that's something to get excited about. He knows me. Hey, there is one song. He knows my name. Praise the Lord. Ain't that going to be great? Ain't it going to be great when you go to heaven and you don't have to worry about him saying, Depart from me, I don't know you. Ain't it going to be great when he's calls you by name? Come on in. He calls your name. Come on in, Mr. Bobby Collins. Come on in, Brother Danny. Boy, ain't that going to be great? Praise the Lord. Why? He was beat beyond recognition. Being made of your curse. But now you recognize not only it's holy, you recognize as Christ's very own body. That's what the church is, the body of Christ. The Bible says that the face of Christ shines in our heart. The Bible says the lamb is given for your clothing. Christ is the lamb of God we're clothed in his son. That's how blessed you are. God sees His own Son when He sees you. <clears throat> That's higher than Michael the Archangel in His righteousness. Are you in Christ? <laughs> Michael the Archangel is righteous. He's an angel, a minister of spirit, a flame of fire, a holy righteous angel who's over a whole company of angels. But He's not the body of Christ. That's us. Praise the Lord. God, that's something to get excited about. Next, the earth was cursed. What did Adam tell Adam? He says, the ground will no more bear its strength unto you. You're going to have to go out and fight these thorns. Okay? So what did Jesus do? He wore a crown of thorns. Why? Because he wants to give us the earth. What does he say in the Beatitudes? What's one of the first Beatitudes? Blessed are the meek, for they shall what? Inherit the earth. Well, this earth is covered with thorns, a lot of us are dead. He's going to come and he's going to make it new. That's why he bore them crown of thorns. They put them crown of thorns upon his beautiful brow. And I'm telling you, them thorns were some thorns. I mean, they pierced all the way to the bone. And they 
therefore there remaineth a rest for the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, God's rest, has ceased from his own works as God did from his. I want you to know, when you got saved, you don't have to work your salvation. You cease from that. In the Old Testament, they tried to keep the Ten Commandments. They tried to, at age 13, what they do is a bar mitzvah. You know what bar mitzvah means? Bar means son, mitzvah means commandment, means son of the commandment. And were the kid to pass the bar mitzvah, he quotes the 613 commandments. At age 13, the average Jewish boy he knows the 613 commandments and he tries to live his life by them. And every one of them has been a musical failure. Nobody. And it's weariness to the soul trying to live that righteous. But what does Jesus say? Are you heavy laden? All you that have laid, come unto me and I shall give you rest. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light, and you shall find rest for your souls. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why? How does man work? We work with our hands. Jesus stretched out his hand on the cross, and he let us in the man. And through that blood, and through the work of his hands, I now have rest for my soul. I don't have rest for my spirit. I don't got to work it out. I don't got to go and make my soul righteous. I don't got to go and make my spirit righteous. I don't got to go and try to be holy before God. He already done it. When I come to the cross, the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed my soul and spirit from sin. And then His spirit came inside me and become holy. And now He prays. The next verse says, Let us labor therefore to enter in that rest. Let's talk about the body. The soul and spirit is already at rest. My soul is perfect before God. The blood of Christ has cleansed me. I'm the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. My body awaits this. Why? Because of how good I was. Because I paid my tithes or read the Bible or went up and knocked on the doors and witnessed the people and visited the people in the old folks' home. Is that why? That I got rest for my soul? Absolutely not. I got rest for my soul because Christ cleansed me through the work of the cross. Praise God. I got rest through His work. Man's work would have never been done. Curse of man, sinful man, fallen man could have never worked out salvation. Christ wouldn't work salvation for you at the cross that you enter into His work. He took your curse of work. You take His blessing us and now you rest. Rest of His feet. Next thing that we got in our curse was an enemy. Look at this verse. Talking to the woman and the servant. Said, I'll put enmity, make you an enemy between the woman and between thy seed and her seed, shall bruise thy hand and shall bruise thy head. Mankind now got an enemy. I want you to know God made this earth an absolute righteousness. He made Adam and Eve an absolute righteousness. There was nothing sinful at all in this earth. And what Adam and Eve done when they listened to the serpent and they ate of the fruit, you know what they done? They sold this earth to the devil. You know the Bible teaches that? God says, Behold, after day one, it is good. After day two, behold, it's good. Day three, it is good. And after day seven, behold, it's very good. But after Adam ate the fruit, you know what it says? This present world is evil. This world of life and wickedness. It says that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. It says that Satan is the god of this world. This world now is a world of sin. Adam so does that. Paul says, I'm carnal. Soul in the sin. And now here we are in a sinful world as a fallen creature with Satan as the prince of the power of the god of this world, our enemy, ruling over us. So what did God do? God wasn't a man, but he became a man in Jesus Christ. And he made an enemy. He went to the devil. And he defeated man. Satan defeated man in the garden. And he stole the earth from us. He stole all our blessings from us. So Christ came. And this is Satan beat man in the garden. Man beat Satan on the cross. Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You see how good that is? You want to know why? So now we're free from our enemy. The Bible says that all of our enemies are going to be put under our feet. Why? Because we're the body of Christ. How did he do it? With his feet. Then pure his feet crush the head of our enemy. Last one. But I want you to know why the main focus of this message is to show you how blessed you are. I want you to know Christ had to bear all these curses. 
And when you think about it, Christ was made a curse for us, hanging on a tree. For it is written, the curse is everyone that hangs upon a tree. Anybody got any sin worthy of death was to be cursed to death upon a tree. Christ went and bore your curse to death on a tree. Why? So you are no longer a curse. You are blessed. You have no more sin. You have a new body. You have a kingdom. You have a throne. You have a crown. You have a God. You have a... You have all of heaven and earth. You are so blessed. It's so much more than I've got my health. The kids are healthy. I've got food and I've got clothes. You are blessed beyond... The Bible, the God here that teaches you this, to think as big as you possibly can. And then he says, He said, I'm able to do abundantly, abundantly above all that you can ask or even think. He says, Thank me. How blessed you want to be, Brother Danny? How blessed you want to be, Brother Chan? Thank me as you can think. He says, I'm going to do abundantly above that. That's how first Christ began to cross. That you may be abundantly blessed above what your mind can even offer. That's a God that leads you. And you don't got to do nothing to deserve it or to earn it. You just simply come to the cross humbly. Father, fill me with you. Cleanse me with your blood. Fill me. Live in me. Abide in me. Walk through me. Be one with me. I'm asking this question. Don't even answer it. Answer it to your own self. Have you ever put God 100% first? Just for one day. I'm not saying for a whole year or for five years. For one day, God 100% first. From the time you get up, you're hitting your knees, praying, you're studying, you're meditating, the whole day. If you have, and I pray that you all have, I guarantee it's a day you remember. Because you can feel the blessedness of the Almighty. Being present with you. There's never been a day in my life that I haven't been God 100% perfect and gave Him praise that He didn't manifest and reveal Himself unto me. And that I didn't feel His presence in my daily life. Do you want to feel God's presence in your daily life? Put the family second, put the church third, put work fourth, put everything in the right order they need to, but put God first. Praise the Lord. And you will feel the presence of the Almighty God. This is a promise that He gives in Psalm 22. He says, I inhabit, I live in your praise. Just put Him first and praise Him, and He will manifest Himself to you. He will reveal Himself to you. A lot of people say God ain't real. They never put God first. Because everybody puts Him first. He reveals Himself to you. Last of all, Adam and Eve sold us out in the sin. Let's look at what sin does real fast. I can quote these scriptures, but it's not free to look at it. For the wages, payday. Everybody loves payday, don't you? Well, sin's got a payday. The wages of the payday of sin is death. That's what sin does. We all got sin in our life. Look what James says about it in James 1.15. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. There's one I passed up real fast. There was no such thing as sickness or disease until sin came. Sin brought forth sickness and disease. And then right before Christ went to the cross, they tied him up and they whipped him from head to toe. And they ripped the flesh off his body. And he says, I may tell all my bones. They stare at me. And the Bible says that we are healed. And the last one is death. We all die because of sin. Think about who is Christ. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He's God. He's the Word. The Word was made flesh. He's God. All things were made by Jesus Christ, whether it be visible or invisible principalities and powers, the Bible says. All things were made by Him and for Him. In Hebrews 1 and 8, the Father says to the Son, Thy throne, O God, is forever. In the book of Ephesians, it says that God through Christ made the worlds. The Bible says in John 1 12 that Jesus made the world and the world knew him not. Think about who Jesus is for just a minute. He is the Almighty God. He's the one who measured the heavens with his span. He is the one who holds the water in the hollow of his hand. He is God. And what did he do at the cross? He died. God made himself a tender plant. 
That's what it says. He was a tender plant. A tender plant can easily be killed. He made himself a tender plant. He made himself so low that he could taste that. Why? Because that's what we were sold out to. We were sold out to sin. And sin brings forth death. And we're all got a death sentence. But I want you to know something. He took the stinger out of death. If you see a big beautiful bumblebee, you'll run from it because you know how bad the stinger is. But if you knew it didn't have a stinger, why it looks just like a butterfly. Same thing with death. A lot of people are so afraid of death. But I want you to know when you're filled with the Spirit of God, you can do like Jack Booth. I'm in a tunnel and I see the light. Hallelujah. I see a gate my body's waiting on me. And they call you over to the bedside. Don't worry about me. The gate's open and I'm going home. And then he takes his glass of bread. I watched that with my own eyes. There wasn't no sting in the death. Christ took it out. Hallelujah. That's what I'm excited about. So what did Jesus do? He actually died. God in the flesh literally tasted death for three days and three nights. He bore our curse all the way. You are completely free in your soul and in your spirit from any curse that Satan has ever put up on mankind or upon his earth. You are 100% blessed. You are 100% okay with God. <laughs> when God looks at you, He ain't thinking that sin you committed last week, that big sin that you don't want nobody to know about. He ain't thinking that when He looks at you. When He looks at you, He says, That's my child. Oh, I love you. That's mine. And when you go mention that sin to God, you have to remind Him of it because He said, I cast it into the sea to be remembered no more. When remembering your sin, that's of the devil. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring all the things in remembrance that Jesus says. But you don't know what the evil spirits do? They bring all your sins to your remembrance. Because God don't remember. What does God say in the book of Hebrews? Your sins and iniquities I don't remember. How much? No more. Why do you remember no more? <laughs> the devil wants you to remember your sin to make you think you're wretched and no good because if he can make you believe in your heart you're wretched and no good, then you act wretched and no good. For the word of God so if I think in my heart, Brother Bobby, I'm the righteousness of God, I got a better chance of acting than don't I? And that's what the Bible says. I'm the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Then who came the soldiers? They said he can't be up there on the Sabbath day. And what happens? You can't leave him on the cross all night, according to the law. The soldiers came, they break the legs of the thief. Then they came to the other thief, and they break his legs, which is crucified with him. And when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already. Notice that he's dead already. Every one of these curses, Christ has bore and then shed blood. He bore the curse and shed blood to clean the curse. But the last part of the curse is dead. And when Christ was dead already, they break not his legs. And what happened? But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and out came. Christ bore our curse all the way to death. And then he shed blood even to death. The last time he shed blood, he shed blood seven ways. And the last time he shed blood was right after he died. They speared him in the side. He had to bear the curse before he shed blood. And I want you to know that you will never die. Jesus said in John chapter 11, He who liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? I want you to know. I watched a man die. Jack Booth. But I'm going to tell you, he didn't die. His body died. But you know what? You're not this body. You tell your arm to move. You tell your mouth to speak. You tell yourself to go eat or go work. You control this body. You're not this body. You may feel its pain, but it's not you. You're the being within. And that being shall never die. Jesus said, He who lives and believes in me shall never die. Paul says, <laughs> I have a desire to die. I have a desire to go and die. He says, it's more needful for you that I stay. He said, but it's better for me that I go and for to me to leave. It's far better to go and be with Christ. He says, to die is gain. He says, you gain something when you die. Why? Because Christ died. He bore that curse for you and then shed his blood. Your soul and spirit is now at rest and free for this sin. And we ought to be the happiest people in the world. 
We ought to be tickled pink. You know what? Sometimes I look around and I know I'm a little bit of a long-winded preacher. But go read the book of Acts. We can't go long-winded preacher was. Apostle Paul. He preached to a man, fell asleep, fell out the window. Then he went down and raised him up from the dead and then preached till daylight. Alright, you could have had him. <laughs> That's why we keep all churches on worship floor these days. <laughs> anyway, I want everybody to know the place. God loves you. Think about how cursed your Savior was and how much he suffered. And then flip the coin over. As bad as he was cursed, I'm blessed that much. As much as he suffered, I'm going to enjoy that much. Praise the Lord. And encourage yourself in God and in your Christian walk and be alive. Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel.